just about 4.30 yesterday, we were inside actually, so I didn't see it. A uh, neighbor across the street actually saw what was going on, but the airplane just came right over top of those trees there. And you can see there's a tree way up the, the street actually where the, the wing just kind of hit some of the branches. And then you can see the couple mailboxes up there where it uh, did clip those. And then kind of came right down here and hit the light post, which is right here. Took that down. It was kind of laying over that way, hit our mailbox, and then was sitting in the yard there. So this this yard over here yeah, is where, where it landed? Uh, were you home? Mm -hmm. So tell me when you first found out or heard it or... Uh, well, we were upstairs uh, and we heard the crash of it like kind of hitting the, the light posts and the um, mailbox and just looked out the window and said, oh my God, there's an airplane in the front yard. So I ran outside and, um, you know, the plane's the engine was off and I, I kind of walked up to the, to make sure it was, you know, get the guy out of the airplane and he opened the door and I was, are you okay? And he was fine. And he's just like, I'm okay. And he got out. Uh, made sure the engine was off and everything like that. We just kind of walked away, stepped back. Um, and they had already actually, my wife was on the phone calling 911. There was uh, somebody, I guess, had seen the airplane coming down somewhere up there and I'd already called. So when we called, they said, oh, are you calling about the airplane? And that one just, just went down because we already know about it. So not many minutes later, you know, the fire and EMS from Miami Township um, and police showed up and that was kind of, it's kind of it. They then, very shortly after that, they just uh, taped off everything, you know, all around the entire street. And then it took, you know, it was about 9.30 last night when they finally got the airplane out of here. But amazingly, it wasn't any worse than that, I guess. It was just a pretty, pretty skilled job of him being able to land it on the street here and only hit a few mailboxes and the, um, the lamppost. And luckily, there was nobody playing in the street. There was no, there were no cars parked in the street. It was just a kind of a fortunate situation. Yeah, and, and there's no telephone poles out here, so that's really fortunate. Correct, yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah, the only thing, and, and really, I mean, his wing hit this um, and knocked it over, so it was lucky that his engine, you know, didn't hit it, that the propeller didn't hit it, he wasn't spilling gas, or anything like that, so. Um, the engine wasn't uh, running? He said that he had engine failure, so it wasn't running. So he brought it down with it not running. And it was never, I never saw a propeller spinning or anything like that. By the time I got offside, it was completely off and everything like that. So I think it was off. I don't think the engine was working at all. He said it was about four to five miles before he got here. He told me that he uh, started having engine problems. And then all of a sudden, about 30 seconds before he came down, he said it just cut. And so he just had to take it down, basically what happened. He was looking from some point he was look, starting to look for um, the golf course. He found the golf course, so he's kind of heading that way. And then it was just like he had to just take it down somewhere and, and ride it down on the street. So he was f familiar with the area a little no, bit? No, he's no? actually from out of town, but he, he was using you know GPS and, and things along those lines, okay. I think so. And he was very young, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, young guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you were the first one. Well, the kid across the street saw everything. He was outside mowing the lawn. Um, and then, and then I think my neighbor here was actually mowing the lawn in the back. So all three of us just kind of came out at the same time. Fortunately, the kid across the street was like kind of, you know, hidden behind the tree and everything. He was safe. And, uh, and then our neighbors, you know, from right next door came out as well. But yeah, we were just kind of there. It was just strange, strange situation. Uh, a technical kind of thing. Did they take the wings off to to get it out of here? How did they get it they out of here? They did not. They actually just uh, got a tow truck, a you know, pretty large sized tow truck, backed it up onto it and pulled it up there and just took it out with the police escort. Okay. Yeah. All right. The wings stayed on, everything stayed intact because I think they were saying the FAA was here yesterday evening as well and they have to do some kind of investigation and take a look at the engine and everything. I did see something this morning about what type of plane it was on. It sounded pretty official. But it seemed uh, from the picture that the police put out, it was a very small plane. It was, yeah. Did it seem extremely small to you or? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a small one, single engine, you know, I, I don't really know much about airplanes, but it was, okay. an, it was not a large plane. Okay. Yeah. So, so what, was it, what was it like afterwards, if you're over the shock yet or? Yeah, it, it was just one of those things where it's like, 
how may, how often does this happen? You know, what are the, what's the, what's the chances of this type of thing happening on your street? And then for it to, you know, to happen, I guess was just kind of a, a crazy thing. Um, it took about, you know, 30 seconds to process the whole thing as it was going on and start thinking straight and make sure, you know, like from a safety standpoint, like, okay, really need to make sure that, you know, we're safe from the airplane because if it went down or whatever, um, because it's just like one of the situations you're not prepared to, to deal with an airplane coming down in your street. Um, but I don't know. I mean, other than that, fortunately, it was just, I just feel lucky that no one was hurt. That's about the only thing I would say. Yeah. And you were one of the, the people that people talk about that ran to something instead of running away from it. So congratulations. Well, yeah, and I, what I would say about that is it's just kind of like all, I mean, all my neighbors, it was all kind of the same thing where your instincts are just, oh my gosh, what's going on? You got to go check and make sure. And like I said, fortunately, it wasn't a worse situation, which you wouldn't necessarily realize right away with fuel spilling or fire hazard or those types of things, or even the electric. I mean, um, these wires were hot for a little bit yesterday after they, they took it off, so they had to, you know, really... They had to get those shut down, um, but it's just you know, I think uh, just like I said, just a lucky situation. You got anything else to add? I'm, I really appreciate you talking. Yeah, no to problem. Me. Yeah, I don't have not too much. I mean, it's just yeah. There's another airplane up there now. Uh, yeah, I don't, you're going to be paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Or look at it the opposite direction is that this is probably the one time. Hopefully, it's the one time I would ever have to think about anything like this happening. Lightning striking uh, yeah, twice. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, I don't know. Just feel, just feel blessed. Okay. Thanks a bunch. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. No problem.